everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to go over adding fires to fireplaces in Photoshop. So as you probably know, it's common practice for real estate photographers to add fires into fireplaces in their real estate photos using Photoshop. It's a nice touch and clients really love it. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the common scenarios that I come across with fireplaces and demonstrate in Photoshop how I deal with each one. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so before we dive into this video, I just wanna mention this video is sponsored by Soundstripe. Okay, so here you can see I have Photoshop open and I have three images here. This is like a modern fireplace we have here. And then this is a fireplace that already has logs in it, like gas logs. And then finally we have a fireplace with no logs in it. So basically these are the three most common scenarios I come across with fireplaces and real estate photography. So I just wanna show you how I deal with each one of these individually, cause it's a little bit different for each one. That way, if you are unfamiliar with this process, you'll be prepared to deal with almost any situation you come across when it comes to adding fires to fireplaces. All right, first let's start with this uh, modern fireplace here. This is sort of like the most easy one to deal with probably. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna uh, zoom in here to this fireplace area. And next over here on the layers panel, I just want to add a new layer here. So I'm going to add a new layer and I want to get my pen tool, which you can hit P or select it right here. So this is very important. You want to make sure path is selected, not shape. You want path. So once you have your path, now we just need to make a path in here first on this layer that we created here, not the background layer. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight across here, actually. Go a little lower here, maybe like right here. I'm just gonna make a straight path here. So now you can see we made this path with the pen tool. Now simply what we need to do is go to filter. We're gonna go to render and then you'll see flame. Now here's this uh, dialog box here where you can change, you know, the length on shorter. It actually looked pretty good like right off the bat, like something Something like that. We want you know low, low flames here. We don't want it like a roaring fire. <laughs> so uh, you know, use your best judgment here. You have width of the flames, so you can you know make the flames wider, narrower. Uh, you know, something like that looks pretty good. You know, you can play around with all this angle. Is you know the direction the flames will go. You know, you can make all kinds of wacky stuff. <laughs> Here, we just want to basically make them go straight up, so zero is fine. You know, something something basically like this looks pretty good. Quality, medium is fine. And I'm just gonna hit okay. So now, obviously this is way too big, uh, but you know, we put the flame in here. So now, I'm just gonna get my uh, move tool here. I'm gonna select this path. And now you can just delete the path. So now you can see, once I clicked on it and deleted it, now it's gone. Because I wanna resize this uh, flame here, but it won't let you resize it if you have that path still there. I don't know, it's a very weird thing, so that's kind of an important thing to remember is to delete the path before you try to resize anything. So I wanna make sure this layer is selected, and then I wanna hit Command T for transform, or you know, you could do edit, transform, free transform, which is Command T. And now, you know, I just wanna resize this. I'm gonna shrink it down. A little bit. You know, you can just make this fit how you want it. If you hold shift, it'll squish it a little bit, distort it. Stretch it. You know, just get it to, you know, the size you need to be. So I'm just gonna stick with this. This looks, you know, fine to me, pretty much, more or less. The other thing I'm gonna do here, I like to, you know, with this layer selected, the flame layer, I just want to go to the blend mode. I like to use screen. And that sort of gives the illusion here that like, if you zoom in, like it looks like it's behind the glass now, as you can see, you can see these reflections over it. So it just looks a lot more natural here now and like realistic. So now if I zoom out, you know, we got this nice flame here in the fireplace. Again, I'll show you normal mode from here. See normal mode it just looks like it's more in front of the glass just standing out too much so yeah if there's glass or whatever in front of the fireplace i tend to use screen blend mode it just gives it more of a realistic look 
right guys so this image would be finished for me you know this is a pretty easy process here you know i wouldn't do much more than this it's all good i think that's perfectly fine so now moving on to the next one so here we have this image here now with uh these logs existing logs in the fireplace already so this is kind of another scenario that's common because a lot of people have these gas lo fireplaces with logs already in them like gas fake logs so this is how I would deal with this particular situation. So again, I wanna come over to the layers panel and I just wanna add another layer. And again, I'm gonna use the pen tool. I'm just gonna hit P for the pen tool again, make sure you have path selected. So this is sort of a similar situation to the last one as far as using render flame, but we want the flames to sort of intermingle and come, you know, sort of looking like they're coming out of the logs, in between the logs, that sort of thing. So it's a little bit different. So I just wanna show you this scenario. So for starters, we have this main log sort of here that's going across. So I wanna do my first sort of line here right along that log. So this will be like sort of the main flame. So I just wanna go again to filter, you know, render flame. And again, you know, you have these parameters here to change. Okay, something like that is good. Try that. So now we have this flame kind of going along this log here, which, you know, is kind of what we were going for. Just get my move tool, which is V. If you hit the key V, again, I'm just going to click on this path and delete it. And now what I want to do is with this layer selected, I'm going to just add a mask. So this mask button, I'll add a white layer mask. Now I just want my brush tool, which is in here, where you can hit B, your brush tool is right here. So select that. I just wanna make sure my flow for this right now is just at 100%. And I wanna make sure I have, you know, a soft brush is fine. Uh, like, sorry, 0% hardness. Yeah, soft, nice soft brush, whatever, that's fine. And since it's a black, uh, white layer mask, we want black as our foreground color here, which is what we have selected, so perfect. Now I just wanna zoom in here real quick. And I just wanna kind of go over some of this area and make it look like it's behind the log a little bit better. So I'm just shrinking my brush down here. And obviously this too, like, obviously we don't want it on this metal part. So I'm just gonna kind of go over this. Just, you know, sort of erasing it where it doesn't belong. And the same thing goes for, I just wanna go across. If you click once, if you click once and then just shift click over here, it'll do a straight line. I'm just sort of erasing some of this in front. I want to make it look like, you know, it's coming out from behind the log like this. So that's perfect. That's sort of exactly what I'm going for. And we got a little bit, you know, on this handle here. Just erase that real quick. Again, over here. All right, so now if we back out a little bit. All right, that's cool. So we got fire coming out of here, but now, sort of there's these logs back here too, so um, this is sort of weird right here too. Uh, so I want a little bit more flame coming out in the back here. Uh, so I'm gonna, again, do another layer here, a second layer. And again, I'm just gonna use my pen tool. I'm gonna hit P for pen tool, which is right here. And again, path. And I'm just gonna make another path sort of back here. That's sort of going back along so I black along these logs for another flame. So again, filter, render, flame. It's a little too long. I don't want something super huge here, so. <laughs> So basically, you know, something like that should work more or less. So, uh, so now we got this little flame back here, kind of in the back, which is is cool. Um, again, I wanted to use my move tool here, and I just want to delete this path. And again, you know, if you want to, you know, select this layer and sort of resize this a little bit, you know, however you want, sort of tuck it in there. Again, I want to add a mask to this, so I'm going to go down to the layers panel and add, hit the add layer mask. Again, I want to make sure black is selected and I want my brush tool right here. And I want to, you know, zoom in here. I just want to uh, sort of do the same thing, like 
go over the bottom of this just to make sure it, make it look like it's sort of coming out of in between these two these two logs that we have here and and I want to get rid of some of this overlap right here so next I just want to select these two flame layers again here and I just want to control click on here and I'm just gonna merge these layers so now we have one flame layer that all the flames are on one layer and I want to go to uh, blend mode again I'm gonna go to screen so now it looks like it's sort of in there behind the screen of course you could always you know adjust opacity to to your liking if you wanted to you know subdue them a little bit more that's always an option all right cool so this looks fairly decent I think of course I could have played around with this a little bit more fine-tuned it a little bit more of course but I just want to show you how this process is done so hopefully this gives you a good idea how to deal with this sort of scenario so now let's look at the final scenario where there's a fireplace with no logs in it whatsoever all right so this is the photo here that has no logs in the fireplace whatsoever it's just an empty fireplace all right, so let me show you how I deal with this sort of scenario here. I just want to open up a photo that I have here on my computer, which is of uh, some logs with fire. So, so you can search around the internet for these and you know get some from stock photo sites and whatever uh, and start a collection, just keep them on your computer. So when you have a fireplace like this and you need a fire with logs, you can just pull some from your folder and use them whenever you need them. All right, so I'm just gonna double click on this background layer to uh, unlock it or whatever. And I'm just going to, you can just command click on this or if you just take M, the marquee tool right here and just sort of select the whole thing and you know, control or command X to cut it. So I just wanna paste it into this document. So here we have that. I just wanna zoom back out here. And first I'm gonna hit, you know, command or control T or you know, like I said, free transform. And I'm just gonna, you know, resize this. I just wanna get this to the size we need it to be. And I'm gonna zoom in here. And if you, you know, lower the opacity here, you can see now that you can see the grade coming through. So you can kind of get an idea of how big we want this to be. So something around that, around there. And I'm just gonna put this down into the grate where it should be sort of sitting in this fireplace, somewhere right around there. And I'm just gonna hit enter and I'm just gonna bring the opacity back up. So with this layer selected, if you come up to the properties panel, if, or if you don't see that, if you go to window and you know, open properties here, there's this quick actions little tab here and there's remove background. So I'm just gonna click on that and should remove most of the black here of the background of this image. So as you can see, it removed pretty much all of the black background. We still have some black here in the flame and we're gonna blend that in now. You can see, you know, they created a black layer mask here. So how we're gonna blend this in, we don't want it to look like this, like it was just cut out or something weird like that. So uh, with black as our foreground color, we're gonna select our brush tool. And this time though, we wanna make sure our flow is low. So like, you know, three, 4%, whatever. Again, our brush, we want zero hardness, so like a real soft brush. And I'm just gonna start painting over this and just sort of blending in this edge. So it looks like it should, you know, natural and not so just like cut out. <laughs> so something like that is good. Actually now I'm gonna switch to white because I wanna get, I wanna actually bring in some of the black back in the base of this. So it look just to kind of darken up around the base of this, bring some of that black background back in even just to make it darker down here around the grate. All right, great. So now we have to deal with this sort of situation of, um, you know, getting it to look like it's sitting into, inside this grate. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more here. Again, you know, make sure the layer mask is selected and I wanna go to black as my foreground color. Now I wanna bring my flow up to 100%. You could even bring your hardness up a little bit. What would, might help too is if you, you know, make, select the image here and just bring the opacity down just so we can see the grate coming through and see where we need to work here. So now we can see that nicely. Uh, so now I'm gonna make, again, select the layer mask, zoom in here. Again, with my brush tool, I'm gonna shrink the size down. You can use your bracket keys to shrink or increase the size of your brush. And again, I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna shift click over here, make a straight line. So again, it's just erasing the logs from that area. And we have these, these down parts of the grate here. Again, just going over that to erase the logs from there. 
to make it look like it's sitting behind this crate and not on top of or on top of it or in front of it. So now if I zoom back out, now we can select the image again and just bring the opacity back up to 100%. All right, so that looks cool. Now, now, now it looks like it's sitting in the grate. Um, but we have this little uh, bar going across here. I didn't get that. So again, select the uh, layer mask. I'm gonna shrink my brush down so it's basically the same width as this little bar here. And I'm just gonna go shift click over here. So bring that across. Make that look like the screen, you know, is in front of it. And that's pretty much it for that. So now we have this fire in there. Looks pretty, pretty cool. Fairly realistic. If you wanted to bring the opacity down just a little bit, make it look like it's a little bit more blended in there. All right, cool. So this looks pretty good to me. And that's that last fireplace scenario. All right, guys, so I hope this gave you a great idea about how to add fires to fireplaces in Photoshop for your real estate photos. If you have another method that I didn't mention here, please mention it in the comments below and share it with everybody else. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you again soon on the next one.